Oklahoma moments away from facing Missouri in the semifinals here at the World Series. And Chris Button, Oklahoma is led by a coach that's played some high-level softball. Yeah, it's so unique. We're used to seeing a lot of these teams coached by their parents, but they're coached by a former college softball player. Haley Galvin just wrapped up her career at Fresno State. She came back home to Oklahoma, and she said she wanted to give back to the game that gave so much to her. So she started coaching Little League. She told me she remembers what it was like when she played back in the day. Her dad was her coach, and she remembers all the life lessons she learned by, back then, and she thought she could impose those on these girls, not just the stuff on the field, but the life lessons off the field. She did joke that sometimes she has to remember, like, these aren't college girls, and you can't talk to them the same way that she would talk to her college teammates, but she said she's had a blast, and she will also be expecting her own little one this coming November. Well, it's so exciting for her. And they will be facing a Missouri team that swings a pretty nice bat. Let's meet the girls from Missouri. Hi, my name is Afton Regan. My favorite food is pasta. Hi, my name is Nova Porter. And my favorite food is a cheeseburger. Hi, my name is Paige Besky. My favorite food is salmon. My name is Hayden Bush. My favorite sports team is music. Hi, my name is McKinsey Lucas. My favorite subject is math. Hi, my name is Lauren Chris. My favorite subject is social studies. Hi, my name is Lydia Casey. My favorite food is strawberry. Hi, my name is Sydney Palmer. And my favorite food is tacos. Hi, my name is Gracie Britton. And my favorite food is a hot dog. Hi, my name is Amy Hansen. And my favorite food is pizza. Hi, my name is Brooklyn Center. My favorite food is sushi. Hi, my name is Kenny Watson. My favorite sports team is the Kansas City Chiefs. Hi, my name is Kayla Romanetto. My favorite color is blue. That is the Missouri team. Daniel Boone, Little League out of Columbia, Missouri. The girls from Como. And here they are having won four straight games facing an undefeated Oklahoma team. Winner to the championship. Hayden Bush will lead things off for Missouri. Missouri had to take on a Nevada team that was playing some really good softball in pool play. They faced them in the quarters yesterday and beat them 4-0, a shutout. Yeah, I think that this Missouri offense is starting to get going a little bit. That's something that their manager, Nick Britton, told us coming into this game is that he's yet to see the Missouri offense that he knows is capable Zoe Griffin gets her to swing at that. Griffin getting the start in the circle for Oklahoma. She had six strikeouts, a high for her in their game against Nevada in pool play. Oklahoma has kind of been the team to beat. They've been undefeated. They played an amazing game against Nevada in pool play. That was one of the best games that we have seen at this World Series. And it's popped up into the hands of the shortstop, Talon Starr. Nick Britton is that Missouri head coach. We talked to him this morning. He loves what this team is doing. He loved the shutout yesterday, but you can tell he's competitive. He is ready for this team to continue its run. He feels like this group has so much potential and really believes in them. Well, even last week, whenever we had a chance to first talk to him, he said our goal is not just to make it to the World Series, but our goal is to win it. And they started off a little bit slow, you guys, because they lost that first game to Virginia whenever Jenna Kiefer had 14 strikeouts. And there were little nerves and all throughout their team, offensively, defensively. And now you can tell they're really starting to settle in. You've seen a lot of different players step up, at, led by Gracie Britton, who is their catcher. We talked about her when we started this game. As Paige Besky will take a seat. And Gracie Britton will come up. If they want to get something going early, this is the one to do it. Zoe Griffin in the circle will have to be really careful. Yeah, she will. She's pitched the second most innings on their team. Her and Cam Casey have had the lion's share of innings. And Zoe Griffin will work a curveball, a screwball, fastball, and changeup. That screwball, though is what we were told is really her favorite pitch. 
Uh, throwing a lot of curveballs here today, Michelle. Yeah, working that outside corner. Trying to keep the ball away from this Missouri team. Trying to take away the power, which is going to be important to do against Gracie Britton. Britton has had a hit in all five of Missouri's games this week, hitting 571. I feel that Gracie Britton is just that committed athlete. She has really big, lofty goals. Wants to, I think, of course, play softball. Division one. Wouldn't be surprised if her main goal would be to play at Mizzou. Being from Columbia. Big act. But she, she also, you guys, has the work ethic to go behind those goals, which is the most important part about it. Yeah, she is the leader of this team, works so hard. They set up a net in their basement during COVID just so she could continue to get that work in last year. And it's going to be back-to-back -back strikeouts for Zoe Griffin. What a start for Oklahoma. Defense, pitching, working hard. Got to love the way that... The ball is moving on this outside corner, getting the strikeouts. Griffin with the curveball, two big ones in the first inning. To the bottom of the first we go. Oklahoma trying to be the first team from their state to win it all here at the Little League Softball World Series. Let's meet the Green Country Little League team. Hi, my name's Cambry Casey, and my favorite subject is math. I'm Lily Beveridge, and my favorite food is chicken and dumplings. Hi, my name is Allie Tucker, and my favorite subject is math. Hi, my name is Candace Brett, and my favorite athlete is Shay Knighton. Hi, my name is Aubrey Davis, and my favorite sports team is the Oregon Ducks. Hi, my name is Taylor Starr, and my favorite person is my mom. Hi, my name is Riley Dodson, my favorite sports team is OU Softball. Hi, my name is Zoe Griffin, and my favorite food is steak. Hi, my name is Cheyenne Dill, and my favorite athlete is Sis Bates. Hi, my name is Molly Needham, and my favorite food is Chinese food. Hi, my name is Alexis Kirstead, and my favorite athlete is Sydney Romero. Hi, my name is Juliana Hutchins, my favorite food is ice. Hi, my name is Eileen e. Hicks, my favorite food is chicken. There is Team Oklahoma, and here's your batting order. We mentioned it, the two, three, and four hitters. Watch out, it gets dangerous with Juliana Goose Hutchins right in the middle of that lineup. Yeah, a team that can hit one through nine in their order. They'll be facing Kennedy Watson. Uh, Got to give a little lefty love, Michelle. A lot of lefty <laughs> love. Watson <laughs> throws a typical lefty curveball changeup combination. Love the fact that she's got those 21 Ks in 22 innings. So she's a strikeout pitcher. Very good at hitting her arm side of the plate. So the outside corner of the righties, inside the lefties. And also, remember, she's got Gracie Britton behind the dish who can steal a lot of strikes for her. Like that. <laughs> On cue. On cue. <laughs> this is Alexis Kierstad. Up first, Kennedy Watson has thrown 21 and a third straight scoreless innings. Gets some help from her defense, Mackenzie Lucas in right. We'll see Mackenzie Lucas just keep her feet moving. That was so important to be able to track down this ball that was tailing toward the line. She didn't stop her feet, stayed on the balls of her feet. And it was <laughs> like, I thought that was going to drop. I didn't think I was going to get there. But you did, girl. You got it. Taylor Starr liked the first pitch. And Brooklyn Center makes the toss from third. Two down. You guys, this, I just feel it. This is going to be a really good game. I feel like Oklahoma is the team that has had target targets on their back this entire World Series. Missouri, a team that started out a little bit slow, but a team who is coming in here wanting to win it. Both of these teams, you know, when you looked at them, we're thinking, wow, oh, these two teams could potentially even meet in the championship game. They're so good. And here we are in the semifinals. Yeah. And this has been one of the best players that we've seen this week in Juliana Goose Hutchins. They hit her, and she takes a base. Goose has seven hits, seven RBI on a four-game hit streak, has a World Series high four doubles, so it may not be the worst thing in the world <laughs> to put her on. Not that they intentionally hit her. Uh, then you get to Candace Burnett. 
Oh, good play by this Missouri defense. That's out number three. Ava Hansen in center. Ava Hansen going in and then having to go back on the ball makes the catch, so leaping up. Great job in center. We're not far from East Carolina. Some of their softball players and coaching staff coming down to watch some games this week in the stands. And how about a former uh, Missouri Tiger giving some love to this group from Como? This morning, they got to Zoom with Sophie Cunningham, who plays for the Phoenix Mercury. She's getting set to take on the Indiana Fever tonight. So after shoot-around, she made time to talk to this team. And if you're not familiar with Sophie Cunningham, played basketball at Missouri, is from Missouri, decided to stay home to help put that women's basketball program on the map. She did just that. And she's the type of player that you want to pick first on your team, and you never want to play against Sophie Cunningham. And these girls love her. I'm a fan of hers just from the way that you describe her. So I'm in with Sophie Cunningham. But the thing is about this Missouri team, they're so proud to be from Como, represent Columbia, and they love their university. They've gotten so many surprise guests, too. Gotten to uh, Zoom with Jenna Laird, who's a current Missouri Tiger. They also got to Zoom with Kayla Kessinger as well. So Nick Britton just continues to surprise them with motivational speakers who are just such advocates and athletes. Yeah, Ava Hansen leading off here for Missouri in our semifinal between Missouri and Oklahoma. Yeah, Jenna Laird, I thought it was interesting. Nick Britton was telling us about that conversation with her, and they asked her some questions. You know, what's your approach at the plate? And some of the players said, do you get nervous too? Because, I mean, this is a really big game that we're playing in. <laughs> and I love that they had that conversation. Guys, before the game, all of the girls from Columbia came and talked to me in the outfield, and I was asking them, what are, you know, what are some things we don't know about you? And they all said, well, we're just really good at softball. They're, and they're so proud <laughs> to be where they're from. I went to school at Missouri and still know several people back in Columbia, and the amount of pride that they have for this team and the way that that town has rallied around them has been really cool to watch. Chris, watch out. You're being a homer out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ava Hansen finds some grass. And we've got a hit in this game, finally. Ava Hansen is such a good hitter for this team. Sits back on a changeup, recognizes it. But the thing is, it's a little elevated. This is a one and two count. And Ava Hansen, so tough with two strikes, a pitch up in the zone like that, she's going to be able to barrel up for a hit. I talk about Mizzou softball. Her favorite player is Hattie Moore from Missouri. Eva Hansen, one of two players in this game that's had a home run this week. Here's Brooklyn center. Hansen going the throw off target. Wow, Zoe Griffin dropped just in time. A throw from behind the dish. You can see Candace Burnett come up at just a little bit offline and Griffin having to get down. That's one of the things that Missouri talked about, that they were going to be aggressive on the base pass until they were thrown out. So look for them to continue to try to steal some bases, move up 60 feet. Yeah, it's 10 stolen bases for them. Now them in Virginia have the most. Yeah, Virginia 12 for 12. We'll see them in our second semifinal. Here's Brooklyn Center still up, 0-2. And a third strikeout for Zoe Griffin. Zoe Griffin has some good movement on this curveball early in this game. She's spinning it. She's not overthrowing it. And she's getting that late break off the outside corner for three swings and misses so far for her strikeout pitches. So now we go uh, pitcher versus pitcher. And Ooh. Kennedy Watson, yeah, she had the no-hitter. But she also helped herself out two for two yesterday with an RBI. Going for the bunt. I know you, you guys like pitchers that hit. Here we are. <laughs> so important to be able to uh, not just play multiple positions, but, but use that bat. It really opens up the lineup for your coach. It gives you a chance to swing it, play other positions. She's throwing with good velocity, yeah. too. Uh, her curveball is has a little upspin to it as well. Oh, look at the ratio. 
count in the strike zone. Yeah, she's feeling it. And Missouri's having a hard time timing it up. That's four Ks for Zoe Griffin. Afton Regan will try her hand with a runner in scoring position. Missouri has been hitting 311 with runners in scoring position. You know, Zoe Griffin's pitching coach is Rachel Fox, who started her career at Texas and transferred to Texas A&M and now lives in Oklahoma. Rachel Fox works with a couple of pitchers on this Oklahoma team. And I was texting her this too. I swear they have such similar mannerisms. Her Zoe Griffin and Rachel Fox. Mm -hmm. I just can't not think it <laughs> in my head. <laughs> that oh yeah she is a pitcher that works with Rachel because I can tell because I just think her face looks like Rachel there's yeah. so many similar qualities really works on getting in her legs mm -hmm. Zoe Griffin already has four strikeouts. She came into this game with nine at the World Series. Ahead one and two. Three strikeouts in a row for Zoe Griffin. She's got five for the game. She is looking so good early in this game. In the second inning, she, all three outs were strikeouts. That last one, though, she was waiting for the call, and she got it. Well, that's just so important, you know, the representation and the fact that they're talking about it, proud of it. I, I love it. You know, it's a big part of I went to school at Oklahoma State University, so it's a big part of the, the whole state of Oklahoma. Yeah, and it's a, a rich history too. So their an ancestors played, or, you know, their their family. It's a, a family connection that they're able to play this sport and and love it. It like, brings them joy. And Haley was telling us that it's it's all ages that yeah. play. They'll still get games and go play with their families, with other families. They'll gather around and play, and that's just so cool to to start at such a young age playing softball and just continue. Riley Dotson leading off here for Oklahoma in the bottom of the second inning. It's been about the pitchers so far. We've seen just one hit in this semifinal. And Kennedy Watson records her first strikeout. Catch all the excitement from the Little League Baseball and Softball World Series tournaments and visit the first ever virtual fan zone experience. You can visit littleleague.org slash fan zone. We've seen some pretty good turnout here obviously family and friends in the stands all week and it's been hot we've had rain delays and they have been through it all that's right loyal fans very loyal is that what you get when your kid plays softball like this is what you sign up for right like you're ready for the rain the cold yeah also the ice cream lily beverage grounds out to third Probably makes you really want to be a part of an indoor sport. Yeah. <laughs> I always found myself being like, wow, volleyball seems great. Basketball, probably not my sport, but like I would play it because it's inside and <laughs> yeah, just ups and downs of weather, man. Allie Tucker steps in for Oklahoma, and there they are, Amanda. I know you want to go out there. <laughs> it's so funny. I didn't know we were about to see that, and I had just noticed that the swings were in full action again. 
Amanda has kept a keen eye on the swings <laughs> out right in center. in front of me. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's just a great recreational park. Yes. A lot of different things to do. So if you have a sibling playing ball, you can go hang out on the jungle gym, the swings. Yeah, a new home for Little League softball. First time since 1994 that we are not at Alpen Rose in Portland, Oregon. We're here in Greenville, North Carolina. A beautiful park. Paige Besky over to first. And Missouri's defense coming through. True once again. No score. We're going to the third. Our first NFL preseason game has Andy Reid of the Chiefs taking on Cliff Kingsbury's Cardinals Friday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Lewis Riddick will have the call. These assaulters on the field. Our coverage beginning at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific with a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Well, Mackenzie Lucas will step in for Missouri. She's a big Chiefs fan. I bet she'll be watching that one. Quick hit, and Taylor Starr takes care of it. Don't we just love the way that Taylor Starr plays shortstop? We've seen so many good shortstops here at the World Series. They're so athletic, anticipating the ball coming to them, attacking ground balls, really strong arms. Yeah, there's been some really good ones. And some flashy plays. Yeah, and positioning, right? That's yes. one of the things I'm impressed with because you're positioned based on your knowledge of your opponent. So that means they're scouting, they're looking. <laughs> I mean, this is... <laughs> and we know that they are. We know They've that told they us. <laughs> yes. They're taking cues from the college coaches right. and us talking about it during the college season. They're like, okay, well, we're going to do that too, especially this Missouri team. I mean, I'm sure all the teams are doing it, but Missouri, like, vocalizes it to us. They are watching these games learning how to throw to certain hitters and find their weaknesses. Yeah, and it's not the, just the coaches. It's the players <laughs> yeah. that are watching and then telling the coaches what they're seeing. <laughs> yeah, <I> love it. <laughs> this is Kaylin Romanetto. Back to star at short. Two down. Oh, we got a full uh, house. Oh, 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 look at that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now that's joy, right? Yeah. If you can spend a day or even a little bit of time on a swing set, that's a good day. That's a tough assignment, bud. Yeah, uh, I might have to leave soon because now there's a line and it says for 5 to 12-year-olds. So. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to jump off, Chris. Did you guys ever do that, right? Like you oh, yeah. swing really high and then jump at the highest point yeah. off. Come on, Chris. Yes, jump. but not on live TV. So when we go to commercial <laughs> break, I'll attempt. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I used to flip off the swing. Mm. Do you ever do that? Oh, yes. No. My mom hated that. Really? <laughs> Top of the order, Hayden Bush. Up for Missouri. I thought that that red shirt looked familiar out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you jealous? Are you okay, Amanda? Oh, she did it. She jumped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> Zoe Griffin. Man, she is good today. That is six strikeouts now for Zoe. Two great pitching performances. Kennedy Watson in the circle right now for Missouri. And we just saw Zoe Griffin pick up her sixth strikeout. And two zeros on there that are important zeros in the in the walks column, Michelle. Yep. But a little different style, as you mentioned. Watson is more pitch to contact in this game. Uh, so a lower pitch count, right? 16 pitches coming yeah. into this inning. And uh, both recording the outs in the scoreboard that's really what counts griffin with the six strikeouts has over 35 pitches so different styles but end results this drop ball too that watson's throwing on the outside corner is getting a lot of chases like hicks just swinging at that one zyne hicks at the plate and these are they're facing two really good lineups these are two of the best hitting teams i mean oklahoma 
hits over 300. Missouri is hitting 287 this week. A rough go as a catcher, huh? I mean, there's been three or four times, Gracie, just in this game alone. And remember, there have only been 21 pitches thrown up to this point, but three times that Gracie Britton just going down to her knees, working hard with Watson. Again, trying to find that drop ball and Britton trying to encourage her there. Picks now at first base for Oklahoma. We've only had one hit in this game. Oklahoma didn't have it. It was Missouri. Second time that Oklahoma has been on. The first was a hit by a pitch for Juliana Hutchins in the first. Here's the pitcher, Zoe Griffin. I think I jinxed Watson, huh? Yeah. With the no walks thing. I'll take Bing. that one for the team. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> Britton trying to get her that strike back behind the plate it's five or six inches off down below the knees <laughs> you can tell she works hard she works hard and she wants it for her next to steal him she'll yes. catch it six inches out and whoop, move the glove over <laughs> remove her body so the umpire can really see it well, she studies this game so much i'm it sounds like from her dad at any time she can she'll study softball Missouri looking for two. They will get the lead runner. But Gracie Britton so much is invested in this game that she's also working with the coaching staff to make sure they have the right scout on every player. Well, and I love that Kennedy Watson immediately knows that she wants to get the lead runner. She's going to go to Hayden Bush, or shortstop, try to turn the double play. Not quite in time because Griffin runs very well. First pitch by Alexis Kirstead sent out to right. Okay, Oklahoma's feeling it now. They're getting a little bat going. Well, and that's what you want to see from your leadoff hitter. Second time through against Watson, you know that she's going to work you on the outside corner. So what does Kirstead go up there and do? She goes up with a plan to look for the outside pitch, stays on it, and drives it the other way. And then you get to the really tough part of your order with Taylor Starr. Goose Hutchins and Candace Burnett, all of them hitting over 400. Starting with Talon Starr here, the shortstop. <laughs> Oklahoma came into this semifinal hitting 257 with runners in scoring position. Couple of good takes by Star. Well, and understanding the strike zone now as they come second time through the lineup facing Kennedy Watson. Britain does a good job of stopping that. Yeah, really good glove work. Three balls, no strikes to Taylor Starr. And she'll take that free pass gladly to load the bases for Goose Hutchins. Now, what do you do? Nowhere to put her. Yeah, I try to work the edges and uh, hope to induce an infield pop-up or something where Griffin can't tag from third. She likes to be aggressive, too, on the first pitch. It's a really good spot there on the inside corner. Remember, she got hit by a pitch in her last at bat, but it barely nicked her when Watson was trying to work the inside corner. And, and Goose mainly has been thrown outside, but Watson going hard in. Lefty, lefty matchup. Hard swing from Goose Hutchins. One run scores. Two runs score. Goose Hutchins is dangerous. Oklahoma leads by two. Goose Hutchins saw an inside pitch for the first pitch of the at-bat, lets it go, gets another inside pitch and completely turns on it, bashes it through the three, four hole, bases loaded. Oklahoma runs very well, couple of big runs up on the board. Goose getting it done. 
she is such a good hitter. She had the very first home run in this World Series. There's only been three of them this week. She had the first one that came against North Carolina in pool play. Just proving time and time again her bat is scary. Well, remember, too, that Coach Britton told us, hey, we've seen Goose before in travel ball, and so far up to this point, she's just one for six hitting off of our pitchers. And you know who else probably knows that? Goose. Goose. You yeah. know the pitchers that you have faced before, and you know how successful that you've been off of them. But what's so impressive to me is that she's been thrown outside for this entire World Series. Candace Burnett to short. And they'll get Goose at second. Another run comes home. Candace Burnett behind her then. I mean, it just keeps coming for Oklahoma. Well, it looked like Hayden Bush might be try to might try to turn a double play there, but when Goose slid into second, maybe that's gonna be part of the conversation right now. Yeah, they want runner interference on that at second. Yeah. Hayden Bush going to take this on her own. Yeah, yeah I, I think that that should be runner interference. Yeah. And I don't think that Goose did it on purpose. I think that she, she thought that maybe Bush was going to continue yeah. over the bag, and so she went to the inside. But... Ironically, that's where Hayden Bush was trying to go yeah. as well. And so it looked like she did interfere with her. Yep. So the umpires have come together from the infield, all volunteers. I mean, I, I believe my understanding is you could review that. I think you could use one of your challenges. They have video yeah. replay. You can challenge until you have two unsuccessful in a game. And I believe runner interference. You can't challenge obstruction, but I believe runner interference is one that you can. Yeah, I probably would have challenged that. So Aubrey Davis has subbed in for Oklahoma. These are big runs right now for Oklahoma with the way that Zoe Griffin is pitching. And just there's something about this inning for Kennedy Watson where she's just lost her command. Started off with a leadoff walk. There's also been another walk earlier or later on to star. Well, and, and back to your point before that play, when we were talking about Goose Hutchins knowing that she'd only was one for six off of the pitching staff here from Missouri, they put themselves in a situation with the bases loaded where they had to throw to Goose. And that will be out number three. But the damage is done. And guess who? Goose Hutchins. She's done it all World Series long, being able to put Oklahoma on top. Nine RBI for Goose Hutchins, but none bigger than two here in the semis. Welcome back. We've learned these girls got game. We also learned they got jokes. So it is now time for our joke of the game. I feel like I should have some music with this, but dun, dun, Alexis dun. Kurz said, why can't basketball players go on vacation? Ooh. Because they can't travel. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, you good. read that. No, I didn't. Ah, no, no, I really good. did not. <laughs> <laughs> didn't. And to this round after starting with 10 teams last week here in Greenville, North Carolina. And yeah, just fighting for a spot in that championship, which will be tomorrow at 5 Eastern. We do want to let you know we did confirm with Williamsport you cannot challenge runner interference or obstruction. So that was not a challengeable play. Um, but looking at it again, we, we did think it was runner interference. So just something to keep an eye on. What could have been? <laughs> but Oklahoma still has that three-run lead. But if you're Missouri, just think back to a few games ago. Because you trailed by three. You were down to Texas, 3 nothing. You came back and won 5-3. to three. You've been here before. That's got to be good experience. 
Yeah, absolutely. Coming through second time through the lineup. Opportunities uh, to see Griffin again. Try to make some adjustments. Sydney Palmer subbed in in the two spot. Liked it after they had that 14 strikeout game and then 12 against Arizona. So they had 14 strikeouts going up against Jenna Kiefer and Virginia and then 12 strikeouts against Arizona. Coach Britton told the team as Griffin gets another strikeout, Coach Britton, the manager for Missouri, told the team, hey, if we have more hits than strikeouts, I will shave my head. And so then it actually happened. They had more hits than strikeouts. They started to turn their offense around, and all the girls were like, okay, no, don't do it. But especially Gracie Britton, his daughter, was like, no, Dad, you are not doing that. No way. He said he might do it after, if they win it all, after the World Series. But does the mustache come with it? <laughs> it's a shaved yeah, head, head. Okay. not right. yep. face. Just, just asking. Yeah. Just asking. I think the mustache is part of his style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember, he I was a former, former wrestler right. at uh, Iowa State. Yeah, it was so cool to talk to him about that experience, what he learned as an athlete, and how he's bringing that to this team, even on the Little League level, whether it's nutrition, whether it's resting your body, competing, everything. I love how he's translating it to Little League softball. Oh, Wow. Missouri has struck out now three times in a row. Zoe Griffin, two in this inning. Well, Zoe Griffin using that outside pitch, so she uses the rise ball to get underneath the hands, and the strikeout pitch is the curveball going away. And gets Gracie to reach for that pitch on the outside corner. I always think it's fun, you guys, to watch players and we see it oftentimes in the circle because they're the one who's touching the ball every single pitch but step up in the big moments and I think that we've seen that in this game particularly from Zoe Griffin she has pitched the best that she has pitched in the entire Little League World Series I'd say now this is her most strikeouts for sure at eight she came into the game with nine strikeouts well, she's the type of pitcher that is going to fare well against an aggressive lineup that's going to swing the bat. And now Missouri's got to be even more aggressive because they have a deficit of three runs, so they have to really try to attack pitches, and that plays back into the hand for Zoe Griffin. Ava Hansen is up right now. She's the only player from Missouri with a hit off of Zoe Griffin. She was just in a in his zone right now. It's her velocity. She's very spinny. Good late sharp movement. That is a good location for a one-two pitch. Trying to expand the strike zone. does remind you. I know. Fox. <laughs> I know. The way she I'm, turns around. I'm telling <laughs> you. They're built the same. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dynamite in a small package. Yes. Right? Just <laughs> the way that they walk everything. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> The, the arm up, uh, the, the arm guard. That's that uh, camo. Yes. Did Texas A&M have camo? Uh, yes. You need jerseys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good battle. Yeah. yeah. Ava Hansen's gonna win out and get the base, get the free pass. A rare occurrence with Zoe Griffin today. Just the first time she's allowed a free pass. Only the second time Missouri has reached base. Uh, it was Ava Hansen both times with that hit, and now the walk. Can Brooklyn Center help her out?
think whenever Hansen was up, it had been the fact that Griffin had only thrown, I think, seven balls we had put, dropped off yeah. the bug, and now all of a sudden she's thrown five. In addition to that. Ava Hansen going. Change up short hops to the plate. Well, and I think just looking at what Ava Hansen did is that she only swung at pitches in the zone, and we've seen Griffin be able to expand the zone and get Missouri to chase out of it. Oh, that was close. Alexis Kierstead dove for it. Bounced just around her glove. Such a good oh, nice effort. Layout. You know, I think the one thing, Michelle, she could have done a little bit differently was pump her arms with her glove and then reach the last second. I think she would have gotten there. Missouri is starting to be a little more disciplined on that pitch on the outside corner, that curveball as it runs away from them. They're identifying the spin and letting it travel out of the zone. Three balls and a strike to Brooklyn Center. Burnett hustling and grabs it over Goose's head. Got to work on the communication, but hey, they got the catch and got the out. It's all about communicating. They don't have a lot of it here, but Oklahoma able to get the out. Burnett over Hutchins. She catches her own hat for the out. <laughs>
Well, and that's where it's so hard. You know, you have to really try to keep your, your head in the game and know that you've got opportunities. And this is where it starts. And Hayden Bush goes into that 5-6 hole, really guns it across the infield. Close play at first, but that's really good defense. And so that's what Missouri needs to do. They need to keep this game where it's at, keep putting zeros up on the board, and then try and chip away at that three-run deficit. I just look out there and they just seem a little bit defeated already. And it is, you know, it's hot out there and you can be bomb that you gave up those three runs, but you still have a chance. You are still in this game, especially when you have Kennedy Watson in the in the circle for you. Now Watson fresh off that no-hitter yesterday. She's facing Miley Needham in the circle right now for Oklahoma with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, you've got Missouri who, as you said, a little deflated, and then Oklahoma's playing loose right now. Yes. Neither the state of Missouri or the state of Oklahoma have ever won it all here at the World Series. Good swing just past the glove at first. Runner coming home. Oklahoma tack one more on. Dill comes across the plate. Yeah, Needham does another good job of going with an outside pitch. Seems like the majority of the hits that they've had in this game have been from pitches that have been on that side of the plate, whether it was Goose as a lefty, or Kierstead and then Needham as righties being able to go with that pitch to the right side. They're making adjustments and making things happen offensively, continuing to put on runs on the board. And how about Needham coming off the bench and getting big hit? Huge. This Oklahoma team just so much. Grass, you can get there. All right? Okay? All right, everybody. Everybody want to make the next play. Expect the ball to get the hit to you. Okay? Make this play. Okay? Let's go. Come on. Nick Britton, the manager for Missouri, talking to his infield. This is Cambry Casey up to bat for Oklahoma. She pitched a really nice game in their quarterfinals. Yeah, and to bring up a good point is that, you know, we talk about the Oklahoma offense and how they can bring hitters off the bench. Well, they also have a very complete pitching staff as well. well she struck out 13. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. too bad. Very well-rounded team. I think the biggest difference for Watson in this game is that it's just a different strike zone for her with the home plate umpire. Absolutely. She's not getting as much called off of the plate. Gracie Britton continuing to work hard with Watson, but. I went off of Watson and it slows it down big time, just enough for both runners to be safe. But because she's not getting as much off of the plate, she's having to bring it more on the plate and Oklahoma is able to barrel up some. Here's an example of that. Britton looking for one a little bit further off the outside corner there, and she brings it more on the plate and is able to get barreled up. And these uh, hitters off the bench are prepared. They are very prepared. And, and one of the things that's important to remember is that sometimes, as you mentioned, the umpire's zone is going to change from game to game and umpire to umpire dep depending on who's the dish. So you also have other opportunities to full hitters and so if you're not, not getting say the river or a wide zone you can still move the ball north and south if you have those abilities but also timing use your change up more and, and that's one pitch that we really have not seen Kennedy Watson throw and there it is <laughs> that's what she needs to throw more often when you have an umpire that's shrinking your zone a little bit well, and Gracie Britton said, too, that's her favorite pitch yeah. of Watson's whenever we had a chance yeah. to talk to her before the World Series. And she does call her own game. It stays fair. Off the bat of Alexis Kierstad. She's got at least one run, two sliding into third, and she is safe as the base comes off. But two more runs. 
Kirstead is just aggressive. Sees a change up and then next pitch on the inside corner, bashes it right down the line, gets it past Brooklyn Center. The third baseman goes all the way to the wall in the corner, hustles around for a triple. But how about the two other big runs she puts up on the board? So now a six-run lead for Team Oklahoma. Taylor Starr. Another run across. Kirstead comes home. Wow, Oklahoma's adjustments. Their bats are really good. Yeah, they're just continuing to put the ball in play, too. Only struck out one time in this game against a pitcher who is four pitch to contact, but and that no-hitter had seven strikeouts and is capable of having swing and miss stuff. Two down for Juliana Hutchins. Oklahoma has brought four runs home in this inning. And they've had multiple different people step up in this game. You think about, talk a lot about Goose Hutchins, and she was leading their team in RBI and still is coming to this game. But multiple people have RBI in this game. And both the innings here, the third and the fourth, started off with leadoff walks to start the rallies for Oklahoma. That's why it's so important for young pitchers out there to remember that first out of the inning, it's so important to to get them. That first batter got to try to get that first out of the inning. Yeah, all of Oklahoma's runs in the third and here in the fourth inning. can tell that they're looking to pitch Goose inside the right fielder. Lucas is so far close to the right field line. Huge hole in right center field. Because they're going to work her inside, continuing to just wear out that right side of the field. But we've seen Goose Hutchins hit to all sides of the field. She's been able to go with pitches. And this is what she's so good at, going the opposite way and then also driving it up the middle of the field. That was her home run. And we saw in this game, a couple of RBIs that she pulled can hit the ball all over the field. You guys hit the ball where it's pitched. She is such a good hitter. This will be the seventh pitch to Hutchins. Right where Lucas was set up. But four more runs for Oklahoma in Green Country Little League is up by seven. Need to, be, need to hit the ball, right? That's pretty obvious, right? Okay? So let's go do you, okay? Don't go down without a fight, all right? We need base runners, all right? Don't chase balls, right? Hit strikes, all right? Let's get some base runners, okay? Let's get some base runners. Two innings, let's go. Hey, let's go. Nick Britton talking to this Daniel Boone Little League team. Just go out and hit the ball. That's what they got to do right now. Fifth inning, down by seven. And they've shown that they've got some good bats. We've seen it all week. They've been aggressive. They've chased maybe too many pitches out of the zone, and that's why he's trying to tell them to only swing at pitches through the zone. Easier said than done at times, yep. but just identify it. Second, third time going through the lineup for a lot of these uh, young ladies. And we start with Kennedy Watson, the pitcher for Missouri. Zoe Griffin has looked fantastic with her eight strikeouts. Had a total of nine strikeouts coming into this game for the week. We were scoreless through two innings, and then Oklahoma made the adjustments in the third and fourth, scoring three and four runs to get to this 7 nothing score. No problem for Taylor Starr. Want to let you know we'll have the series finale between the Red Sox and the Yankees Wednesday night at 7 Eastern from the Bronx on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. One app, one tap.
A lot of these players watch those professional baseball games. They watch professional softball. And so many were so excited to come and play on TV just like the players that they watch and they want to be like this week. I think everybody gets excited about that. I still remember mm -hmm. my first couple of televised games. <laughs> yeah. Did you get nervous? Absolutely. There really is just something different about taking the field and you see those huge cameras and that's you're right. like, whoa, that's the thing that sends out the signal to <laughs> for me to be on ESPN? Like, that's right. it. That's the thing. This is Lydia Casey up, subbing in for Missouri. We do have mandatory plays, so everyone gets at least one at bat. Only playing six innings, of course. Oh, Zoe Griffin. I mean, wh what do you do? She's wow. tough right now. Not wasting much time going right at the zone. Ninth strikeout today. Look at the way she paints that corner. Really good job of just locating the pitch. Nice frame behind the dish. Burnett. You'll notice how small that Burnett will get back there behind the plate, right? She's pretty tall, and her nickname is Daddy Long Legs because her legs are so <laughs> long. Yeah. And you can see the length of them here, and she looks pretty big. But then when she goes to set up, great smile. When she goes to set up in her target, then she gets smaller, low target with her glove. Oklahoma makes the grab. They've got a nice lead here in the semifinals of the World Series. Oklahoma exploded in the third hitting, and guess what? It was Goose Hutchins with a couple of RBI. And she was the one that plated two runs with two RBI, and then Alexis Kierstead had two RBI of her own when she hit a triple. Oklahoma has scored seven runs in the last two innings, and their offense, Michelle, is just clicking. Firing on all cylinders. Even their players coming off the bench with the mandatory play, getting in the, yes. getting in the job, getting the job done, and... Uh, in the swing of things. Love to see a very complete team in Oklahoma. Look at that, though. Look at this. He's got the seven runs on just the five hits. So more runs than hits because they've taken advantage of some of the free passes that Missouri's offered them. Yeah, Oklahoma now with 35 hits in this World Series. That's still second to Texas. We will see later. They have 36 so far, but nobody has beaten Oklahoma this week. And you can kind of see why. They're a sound team. They could make those adjustments, and they've got some really solid pitching. Zoe Griffin is so good today in the circle for them. Now throw into Candace Burnett back behind the plate, who we were just talking about, and up to bat. Love the fact that on her questionnaire, when asked what she would do if she won the lottery, buy an indoor batting cage. <laughs> I think she likes softball, guys. Yes, yep. I think so. <laughs> Nice pitch. You get a good view of the, the daddy long legs. Look at yeah, that. 5'9". You know. <laughs> I think it's a very, very good nickname. <laughs> Candace Burnett had a game earlier on in pool play against Nevada. She had five RBI. Sun's coming out. Got to get the shades on out there in the outfield. Besky at second takes care of it. This is our first semifinal. We will see two more teams play. Texas is over there working in the cages right now. They're going to face Virginia. That'll be a rematch. These two teams faced off against each other in pool play. That's coming up over at, excuse me, at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Two. And it's just so deceiving because Virginia, the team that they're playing, is wearing those <laughs> yellow uniforms with a black accent. And you just think that they're Missouri every time. And this <laughs> Missouri team is wearing orange and blue, and they look like they're Florida. And yes. we're just all kind of thrown off up here. <laughs> I 
What a great story yesterday for Texas. They go to extra innings, ended up bringing Friendly Robinson mm -hmm. over from third base to pitch that seventh inning so they didn't burn their pitcher. Raylan Van Zee, she will be available. That was a tough, tough game in their quarterfinal. Yeah. Yeah, a little strategy going on. You know, speaking to a strategy, I feel like this will be a game that Kennedy Watson will be able to learn a lot from. You can tell that Kennedy Watson has so much potential, and you go from the high of all highs, throwing a no-hitter, right, to kind of the low of all lows of being in the semifinal game. You're pitching, and your team is down 7 to nothing because, one, your team's not scoring for you, and then, two, you've given up seven runs, but she'll be able to learn so much from this game about pitch placement and being able to work with a maybe a smaller, tighter zone. Yeah, it's all those nuances, right? A lot of times you learn more uh, when there's a little bit of a bitter taste left in your yes. mouth, right? You go back and you study your losses probably a little bit more than you study your wins. Lily Beveridge. And it's bobbled at short off the tip of the glove. Gives Beveridge time to get to first. And because of the fact that Hayden Bush, the shortstop, look at her. She's playing up the middle of the field. And that ball pulled her toward the 5-6 hole. If she was playing in her normal spot, then that just would have been an easy out for her. To a base hit for Lily Beveridge. Gets us back to Allie Tucker. Two on, just one out. Back at Watson. Drops out of her glove. Does get the throw there, but now it's two runners in scoring position for Oklahoma. This ball hit right back up the middle. Watson is going to knock it down. Just goes to first, but sometimes those hard comebackers, if you can get them immediately, can get multiple outs on that. But once it drops down, so important just to go get the one out. Miley Needham back up, subbed in in the fourth inning. RBI single, boom. Needham representing the winning run at home plate. There's run rules in Little Lee. Ten runs after four innings. the run rule if you're up 15 runs after the third inning or up 10 runs after the fourth inning then the game is over we've only had that happen it's once or twice this week two times twice yeah we've yeah. had we've had really good competitive games yeah. but now base is loaded zoe griffin the pitcher back i just didn't expect this to be a, a seven-run game mm -hmm. with potential right now for Oklahoma to make it even a bigger lead. It, and, and like we talked about, it was not like there's been a, a ton of hits. It was five hits coming into this inning that scored the seven runs, but it was the timing of those mm -hmm. hits. The triple with the bases loaded, and obviously Goose Hutchins, her big hit, the single with the bases loaded as well. And so anytime you get big hits with the bases loaded, you do damage. Lucas runs on it from right field, and Missouri, they need those bats right now here in the Little League semifinal. Oh, look at this cutie. You can find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the official handles at Little League, or follow the action and join the conversation. Hashtag Little League World Series. Hey there. <laughs> hey, bud. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh, that's a big play for Oklahoma's defense. This is Missouri's last chance. 
Wow. We talk about how they can hit, how they can pitch, and then how about how they can feel? Goose oh, coming oh, oh, bare hands it. And so she bare hands it. She does tap in the glove, but a cannon over to first base. So now top of the order for Missouri. They're down to two outs. I like where Missouri's head is at, though, to try to put a bunt down just yeah. to put pressure on Oklahoma's defense, try to find a way to get on base. And I feel like if it was anybody else's arm except for <laughs> Goose's, like, exactly. that would have been safe. Remember, Goose plays baseball, too. So she plays both softball and baseball and enjoys both sports. We've seen a couple players do that, play baseball and softball sometimes yep. at the same time during the same seasons. I was talking with Goose's mom, and she said they actually lived in Williamsport when she was three and four years old where they play boys baseball, and she would tell her preschool teacher, Miss Eckerd, I am going to play in the World Series one day. You know, she plays baseball, so that was the idea. Maybe she'd be at Williamsport. Didn't realize she'd be here in Greenville. But they've actually been texting with Miss Eckerd about how cool is it that when she was three, she told you she was going to be here, and here she is. Oh, I love that. That is it. Oh, that Amazing. is so cool. You have to vo vocalize your dreams. It's so important. And then, I mean, we'll see Lexi Rocio coming up playing for Texas, and we have a great picture of her watching the World Series yep. four or five years ago and saying the same thing. I, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to play. Full count to Hayden Bush here. She'll take the walk. Just the second walk by Zoe Griffin this afternoon. I want to remind you our second semifinal will be at 7 Eastern on ESPN2, Texas and Virginia. Lauren Christ subbing in for Missouri. This will be her first look at Zoe Griffin. Griffin to first. Runner does move in scoring position, but now Missouri just has one out. If you want anybody at the plate right now, it's Gracie Britton. Runner in scoring position, lots of work to do, but she has been solid. Dotson hustling in. Oklahoma dominant. On to the championship. Just a great team effort for Oklahoma. Pitching in the circle. Outstanding with Griffin. How about the bats for Oklahoma? Explosive, good defense. A team that truly can do it all. And love the hug right there with the way that Zoe Griffin pitched in this game. You could tell you guys from the first pitch, the first batter that she faced, that she was in a zone that she was feeling it. Nine strikeouts for her. She came into the game with nine strikeouts, has doubled that up and got some help from her bats with seven runs across. So Oklahoma has a chance at history. They would be the first team from the state of Oklahoma to win the Little League Softball World Series. They will face either Virginia or Texas. Our second semifinal will be at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. It is Oklahoma on the way to the championship game here in Greenville, North Carolina. They get a big time win in the semifinals. 7-0, a shutout of Missouri and Oklahoma.